All right, flushing uh, my uh, old antifreeze out. And this is how I typically do it, you know. There's a lot of ways of doing it. Uh, I use a pump, electric pump, to get the initial antifreeze out of the radiator. And it's a good idea to do that. It's, you don't kill your grass, and that's the right way to do it. You're supposed to dispose of it properly. Then once I get that, the antifreeze out of the uh, radiator, then I take the upper hose off, and I got a, a water hose, just a little more than a trickle going in there. I let it run for like about 10-15 minutes until clear water starts coming out. But I already did it with the car running. I did it with the car running about 10 minutes, and maybe another 10 minutes, just letting it sit here and just letting it flush. Have my heater wide open, and everything's flushing through. Uh, not much came out. I did it about three years ago, so really no rust or anything come out. But I like to do it every three years. Because uh, I don't want to uh, start eating things away, like uh, freeze-out plugs. I never want to do those. So I really maintain this, you know, so I get really no corrosion in, in the engine, really. And it keeps everything lubricated, the uh, antifreeze. And then I mix. I buy one gallon not, you know, concentrated, not 50-50, and then you get more value for your money when you do it that way. You buy a 50-50, if you're really wasting your money, you're paying almost full price for a gallon, and you're getting half water and half antifreeze, you know, my opinion, but uh, what I do is I buy the concentrated, and then I just use distilled water, very important, and uh, just fill up the half gallons, I, I, I empty concentrated half a gallon into this, I already did this, I put the still water in it, the rest of the way up with the still water, and now I got two full gallons, and I got another gallon of the still water, in case I have to add, I'll probably, it takes a little bit more than two gallons, so I'll probably put in initially, I'll put in maybe a couple of quarts of just the still water into the system, and then I'll start putting the antifreeze in, and I know I'll, you know, I'll be good then. And it's getting there. All right, just a short video, my way of doing it. Uh, I have another way of doing it. I usually take off the heater hose, you know, off the uh, the heater core, and I run it through here and I and I pressurize it with the with the garden hose, and I just let it, you know, dribble out of the fill on the radiator. But I don't want to go near my heater core. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. I don't want to start tugging on that and pulling on it anymore. I, oh, it's a nightmare on these cars to do a heater core. So I stay away from those hoses. I really don't, unless I really have to, you know. Uh, try not to mess with them. You know, it's getting old. Cars, you know, it's an 84. You know, it's, it's getting there. You know, it's getting up there in age. And I, I replaced those heater core hoses. Oh, Oh, about 15 years ago or so. So hopefully, and, and every once in a while I hit them with uh, like silicone or armor roll or something. I say I never want to touch those again. Because <laughs> I know from the old cars, you know, tugging on them. You really, you know, when you take the radiator, um, the heater core hose off, you really take a nice sharp knife and you cut it, you split it and peel it off. You know, never tug on it. Because that's for sure, that's how you're going to break the heater core, you know. But even then, I just don't even like messing with them, pulling on, touching them. Because I know when they start getting old, you just touch those and they start leaking. And on this car, it's a nightmare, I mean, to get to the heater core. I, 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 says, I never want to do that. <laughs> anyway, that's my rant on that. Anyway, we're getting there. It's all flushing out. Nice clear water's coming out. Alright, thanks for watching. Hope this helps somebody, you know. Take care.